Adam Beck Plant One was commissioned in 1921, Christmas Day, and finished in 1930. This plant at the time of its opening was the largest hydroelectric plant in the world. Quite an undertaking and a marvel in Canadian history. It now currently still is running and provides enough power to supply a small town or a small city's worth of energy, which is kind of shocking to think the sheer size and structure of this plant that it's not actually able to uh, generate all the power that's required for the region, nowhere near. The Robert Moses plant across the way, the American side, obviously a much more brutalist style of building. I believe our plant on our side is not that great to look at from the American side, so I can't say much about that. You can definitely see that this building is a reflection of the period of which it was built with all the deco design integrated into it and the neoclassicism of its look. In fact, I think, I'm sure I could be proven wrong, that these used to be windows that have been long since covered over. They certainly look so. While it is a very austere building, it still is impressive. Hello. <laughs> we got a wave there. And of course, if you come over to the other side, as we are directly in the middle of the old station, you can of course see the actual generation plant below the transformer plant I believe it's called. So I believe the turbines are above us or behind us and the generators are below. It's actually remarkable to think that this is a massive hydroelectric power station and it's completely silent. You can't hear anything. I believe I'm right. As you can see there are windows on this side but no windows for the rest. Fascinating information as provided by the plaque. All the water for this generation plant is kept in a reservoir and a canal system that's 20 kilometers long that feeds on the upper portion of the Niagara River just outside of Chippewa and then travels all the way down past behind the Niagara Park system and brings the water down here to the water plant or to the hydroelectric plant. So you think about it, that's almost a hundred years ago. That's a remarkable engineering feat. It's really kind of hard to imagine the amount of work that went into these things at the time without the modern advantages that we have today. That is Beck One. Both stations are headquartered from this rather austere looking building that I believe actually you can go inside and visit. So that's what we're gonna do. It certainly looks like it's got a visitor center. Sadly, it is not. Looks like it was 
I'd like to see that picture over there. It looks really cool. I think this is open for school trips. Not for our particular occasion, however. When you come to this side in the original or the 1950s era plant, the second plant, you're kind of like, well, where is it? Well, you believe it or not, it's actually right across the street in that much smaller building and then underneath us. And then the transformers are further down at the riverside. not all that much to look at over here and sadly the car park that overlooks the American power generation plant is not in available so when we get down there it's going to be a brief little tour to see what's up down there we're actually like on a cliffside if this land were to give away at any moment it would be quite treacherous um, but unfortunately there is construction going on and the regular vantage point to look out over the newer dam or construction project so normally you could park here for free and look over but uh, yeah it's not available today so As we make our way back past the Adam Beck 2, which really, unfortunately, yeah, they just didn't think about design after, say, the 30s, did they? The, the Great Depression kind of signaled the end of beautification of civil projects, I find, because this, uh, you know, it leaves a lot to be desired. You wouldn't even know it's a power station or anything else. Uh, is also easily twice as long, at least it feels so, as the Adam Beck 1 station, which is without question the prettier of the two, just down the way, down the street, as you can see at the end there. There is a massive reservoir on the other side of those pylons that holds water for the two stations, and that way they can control the flow that comes into the actual stations. The reservoirs and the tunnels and the channels have also allowed for erosion of Niagara Falls to lessen over the last hundred so years since the, the construction of these plants. So it actually is a benefit to the falls. Directly below here, you can see the Adam Beck II generation plant with the Moses plant in the background. And ah, this retaining wall, you can actually see some of the work that they're doing to fix this retaining wall, this cliffside wall, as water literally seeps out of it. That's gonna be it here from the power plants. Just wanted to show you these marvels as whenever I drive down the parkway, I always like to stop and have a look and just admire the views. It's free of charge as well. Once that parking lot opens back up at the viewing section uh, over by Adam Beck, too, I'm sure you'll be able to get some great views once again of all that new construction work as well. But definitely check it out. It's definitely one of the more scenic areas of Niagara. I have a very kind of turn of the century or 20s era uh, feel when I come down here. It just feels like a capsule of the past that hasn't really changed much over the last century. I figured I'd just show you and that's what we've done. Thanks for dropping in guys.